Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today I'm going to teach you how I managed to keep so many copper bands alive. The honest answer is I don't. I just replace them every week. Just kidding. There is actually a certain level of skill involved with keeping copper bands and the best place to start is with the fish itself. Like a woman, every copper band is unique with how they can be satisfied and you might have to spend that little bit of extra time working out exactly what each one likes. Some of them are like open books and won't cause you any trouble, while others can be more like Chinese puzzle boxes, making you wonder what more you can do. Wait a minute, are we still talking about copper bands? Unlike a woman however, in my opinion, copper bands are by far some of the dumbest fish we keep. One day realising what food is, and the next day staring blankly back at me as if I've just thrown some sort of alien life form into their tank. The key to success with these fish is finding the smarter ones. In the right environment, copper bands are surprisingly hardy, and although they have a reputation for being weak, healthy specimens don't usually have trouble with disease, and have no trouble standing up for themselves confronting some of my tougher fish. Refusing to eat is the number one cause of death with this fish, and it's our job to try to convince them. Let me give you some examples of how each of my copper bands are unique, and the lengths of which I go to feed them. I'm not joking, I literally have one copper band which will only eat one brand of mysis, but not another brand of mysis because it's too mushy. One of the others only eats at night, and one of them will only eat if the food gets caught on the rock. That's right, if it's floating, it has no idea what it is, if it touches a rock, it's a delicious meal. Right, let's start at the beginning. The most important thing when it comes to buying a copper band is finding one which is feeding. If it's not feeding, it should be ruled out almost immediately. When I say feeding, I mean ferociously attacking the food like this. Not taking one bite and spitting it out. It doesn't matter how much you want that fish, this is a red line, and patience will save you a lot of heartbreak and money in the long run. Remember, it's not going to get any easier for the fish once it's in your tank and having to compete with others as well. You can increase your odds by buying one second hand, where a fellow reefer has done the work for you, but this is still no guarantee, as in my experience a change of environment can cause a couple of days of hunger strike. Once it's in your tank, now is when you have to start putting the hard work in. Usually, shops have them eating brine shrimp, which they're more likely to take, but this has a very poor nutritional value, and isn't sustainable in the long run. In really dire situations, live brine shrimp may just be enough to kickstart their feeding response, but should be added at exactly the same time as frozen brine shrimp, in the hope the fish might make the connection. The key is getting them to eat a range of different foods. This is something you should never stop doing. If you have one already and it's only eating one thing, this isn't enough. Every so often they can go off certain foods temporarily, and it's always good to have a wide range of things to offer them as a backup. The first thing I do when it comes to feeding my copper bands is feed all the other fish in the tanks first. It's best to have something that's quite filling like pellets or nori. Like us, when we are hungry, we will eat everything really quickly, and then gradually as we get full we are less interested in what's on offer. By feeding the other fish first it does two things. There isn't as strong of a feeding response from them when I put the copper bands food in, and secondly, it trains the copper bands to know that their food is coming next. For some reason, quite a few of mine take a while to warm up. Tangs will hammer the food almost immediately, whereas copper bands for some reason seem to have this minute delay where they engage their brains before realising what's happening, and sometimes by then all the food is gone. The next thing I do is only offer the fish what you want them to eat first. For example, if you know that they eat brine shrimp, and you want it to eat mysis, don't give it a choice. Start by feeding it mysis. Being careful not to overfeed, feed small amounts of foods individually one at a time in the order of least likely to eat to most likely to eat foods. The hungrier the fish is, the more likely it is to test something new. Never mix different foods together. If it's already full because it's picked out all the bits that it likes, it's not going to test anything else. Every copper band in the coral room eats both mysis and brine shrimp. However, the really smart ones also eat clam and mastic as well, which can make life so much easier. To get them to take mastic originally, I soaked in the frozen food juice, and crushed whole pieces of mysis into it. While they were picking out the food they're familiar with, they're getting small amounts of mastic at the same time, before they finally realise that that's edible as well, and now they eat it on its own. 
It also helps if you spread it on the rock, as it's a more natural grazing method than on the glass. These are by far the most expensive fish I keep, not because of their initial cost, but the running cost to keep them happy. I go through an 80 gram pot of mastic once a month, which works out at just under 300 pounds a year just to feed them. On top of that, there is the additional cost of all the extra phosphate removers, etc., to keep the water quality optimum, as so much food goes in this system. The most important thing is you keep trying new things until you succeed. If it won't eat during the day, maybe it'll eat at night. If it won't eat one food, maybe it will try another. If that doesn't work, try a different brand of the same food, or a different delivery mechanism such as a feeding tube, or a pot with holes drilled in it so that only the copper band can get the food. Before I wrap up this video, there are two things I'd like to point out. Not all of these fish will eat Aptasia, so if you're getting one for that purpose you might be sadly disappointed. The second point is some of them will absolutely eat certain types of coral. Two of mine, the ones I refer to as the super geniuses of the copper band world, have learned to eat corals, so they need to be kept in tanks without specific types. To briefly sum up, doing the same thing over and over again and hoping you'll get lucky is the worst possible way to succeed with these fish, but if you take the time and effort to get their nutrition right, you can absolutely have one of these special fish for years to come. I hope you enjoy watching my video. As always, I just want to say a thank you to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.